Hello, welcome back to Banu Sushi Leveling. Um, in this episode, we're gonna continue uh, with the, our face OSC and Blender at OSC example. Um, in this case, I will be using this uh, Mona Lisa face uh, to track over the face OSC. I will give you like a very uh, simple example so that you can follow. <clears throat> First of all, you already downloaded um, face OSC app and you have a webcam uh, to track um, any kind of face, your face or any kind of photo, um, it's gonna work because it's this is like a 2D face tracking. Uh, it's not like a 3D one like iPhone X. This one uh, can be good for example. And I'm using this Mona Lisa face for privacy uh, purpose. Anyhow, we have this Mona Lisa working and I'll put this to the side. Um, so we have also Blender and we are already installed the add OSC app and let's say we want to connect this face data OSC data into Blender we simply just uh, need to type in the correct address first of all so you can see here there's an, some kind of address that you need to type in 192.168.1.9 this is my local network um, and let's type it for both because this can be like a, a directional, like dual. Um, it can actually, the data can transfer from this guy into this guy and back to the, the app. And 8338 is the, the port address. Once you set up that thing correctly, you can start the OSC and Blender actually start listening from uh, for data from the outside. You can test it using this monitoring and you can see that it's tracking a lot of things like a gesture, nostril, all kind of a post, face post data. And because we have this post and gesture uh, turned on, you can also use the raw data and normalize raw. I will be just using the, the post for today. So it's sim very, very simple. It's currently tracking the orientations of the face. This Mona, Mona Lisa face is only like looking at the one direction so it won't be too uh, good example but the the position is also being tracked and if I'm not wrong apart from position there's also some kind of scale that you can track so apart from orientation so let's try and type this into blender I'm using one hand for now um, actually I'll just put this to the side and I will work in Blender for a bit. Okay, so in Blender, we know that uh, there's some kind of data coming out from outside. So we, get, we can start tracking something in real time. We're gonna use uh, just Susan head, low polygon Susan head. And we're gonna use the keying set method. So with the keying set, um, it's actually pretty easy. Let's try actually play around with the locations. We just right click here and add single to key inset. I'm actually adding the, the X. Now the location X is added into key inset that we can use inside uh, at OSC. Import key inset you can see here. <clears throat> Object Suzanne location zero. We can add also the, the Z axis, add single to king set, and then reload this. So now uh, it is actually um, already kind of starting to work. I think um, post orientations, I actually want to use the, the post and um, locations. So I'm going to save this real quick. Let's add OSC demo. So I believe this is like host location. And index. Maybe it's actually post position. Okay, 
now it seems to be working and Susan had just fly over somewhere because the, the value is really high and uh, we need to fix that uh, real quick normally I actually use some kind of buffer instead of plugging the value directly to the to the object so I guess this is uh, the wrong way to do it uh, I'm gonna delete Suzanne head and I'm gonna use a locator or empty and I will add a key inset for this guy add a single key inset in the X and the Z and then we're gonna re-import the key inset so we have now the empty empty location 0 and empty location 2 and we're gonna um, we better actually name this post position <clears throat> And gonna re-import it, and this is gonna be. Uh, we need to pipe in the address of the OSC. It's actually, post position for this guy and post position for this guy as well. So now, I think it's kind of working. So I'm plugging in post position zero. To this guy and then post position x so i believe it's already working correctly let's bring back the mona lisa and check our empty there so i, I can move the mona lisa left and right up and down up and down seems to be uh, the opposite way but we can fix that very easily so i'm gonna put mona lisa to the side again back to blender now that the <clears throat> the empty now acting kind of like a buffer, we can actually uh, kind of source this empty into animation nodes. So jump into animation nodes, and let's bring this back. I think the empty is still working. Get this guy. There's actually another method using um, animation node script node. I uh, wonder if I use I should use that instead. But for now, I'm gonna grab this empty anyway. Object out. Transform. Object transform input so the inputs gonna be our empty and let's check this guy out so I think this guy is kind of moving around right and we can easily um, kind of normalize that value <clears throat> so we're gonna use uh, separate vector because when we know that the empty is kind of moving in the X and Z directions. So we can actually normalize that and then use it for Suzanne. So let's get back to the 0, 0, 0 and then create Suzanne. And let's use object transform output. And we're gonna move Suzanne using this value. So grab Suzanne and then here we're gonna combine the vector back. But before we do that, we need to normalize this value into between zero and one. So that's where we use map range. So map range is gonna be very important for us for the X and the Z. And the output's gonna go into the X and Z of Suzanne, and it's gonna move Suzanne. So let's test it out again. Um, I need to grab my iPad. Let's bring back the Mona Lisa face. And 
I think it should be working. Let me quickly check. Yeah, okay, I think it's working, but the value is too small and I need to adjust it. So let's uh, actually bring back the, the viewer node. So this is the original value. We need to check like the, the minimum and maximum. So I'm gonna move around the Mona Lisa face. And this is, so 150 to, let's say, so 100 to 500, 100 to 500, and for the vertical, it's going to be between kind of, like, uh, I think 60 to 60 to 300. So that's gonna control Suzanne positions. So let's uh, check it out. So now I'm, I'm gonna move the Mona Lisa head left, right, and the up down. Up down is actually kind of doing the opposite at the moment. I'm gonna show you the Mona Lisa face real quick. Okay, so you see how this is controlling Susan head in real time. So up down is wrong. I need to fix that. But at least we already kind of fixed the mapping for the head. So that's kind of good. Um, let's fix the up and down position. I'm gonna save it again. The cool thing about this setup is that everything is um, real time and actually pretty fast and uh, it doesn't crash or it doesn't lag at all. Um, so let's check this out. We need to invert the position. So to do the inversion, we need to do, to do just a little bit of math instead of piping this as it is. So this is the value right at the moment. It's one, right? It's, uh, we need to do the opposite. So it's gonna be one. 1 minus the value and I believe that should fix it. Oh, not add, subtract. Okay. See, this is in head now. It's kind of moving correctly. You can actually map it slightly differently with the value, make, make it a bit more. Okay, now I think our setup is almost done. Control up, full screen Suzanne, and Mona Lisa face. So up, down, okay, still wrong. Back to previous, I need to pipe this into the location there. So now I believe it's correct. So up, up down left right up down left right so yeah so that's uh that's working okay cool okay the next thing you can actually do is to um to bake the animations it's it's nice to be able to do it in real time but at some point you need to bake it out if you want to render it out you don't want to do it in real time unless you're using like blender eve um, ev render uh, maybe in the future just use it just like real time, everything, and then you just shoot your 3D animations and then stream it online. And it's gonna be really cool uh, in the near future. Anyhow, it's a, uh, okay, Susan, what am I going, going to do? Okay, basically the idea is um, whenever you have like um, output node in animation nodes, you can actually um, bake, bake it out. So if you want to bake anything here, whatever it says output, I think can be baked. Like if you are using shape keys, you can use shape keys output. Uh, I'm gonna show you that in the next video maybe. For now, just object transform output. Um, uh, safe to say that uh, it can be baked very, very easily in animation nodes. So I will uh, hide everything and just Susan head. And I will turn on this, um, 
bake to keyframe. And the cool thing about this is uh, it's gonna bake it like in real time as well. So let's say you are acting your Susan head, okay? And you want to bake it up. You simply just click on this guy, back to keyframe button. So, okay, let's move this Mona Lisa head around. So, bake to keyframe and you can see I can still move the Susan head around while the animation is baking and it's gonna stop at the, the end of the keyframe. I think it's already finished and I can put this aside and let's have a look at the animations. Look at the graph. You see this is this is the motion capture data of Susan head. It's actually um, capturing the, the Y as well. But now if you, if you play back, it seems like there is nothing happening because you need to turn off animation nodes. Once you do the baking, you turn off animation nodes. It's not processing anymore. But if you scrub Susan head, you see the animation is already baked. And now you can, you can export it as Alembic and then you can add like nice material. You can subdivide it or whatever. Um, and yeah, it's actually baking the motion capture data. And there you go. That's the whole process. Basically, um, if you are using, if you want to use, use this kind of a setup. So basically you need Blender and add OSC add-on and you need face OSC add-on. I'm using animation nodes to do the map, the mapping of data, the weighting and whatever. Um, but that's actually the whole process and this is the result. It's very cool. Uh, even though this is like a very simple example, but the whole process is the same. If you ever want to use the raw data or other like uh, orientation till whatever, maybe I'll do that in the next um, in the next video. But anyway, uh, hopefully this is useful. Uh, let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.